Welcome brothers and sisters, family, friends. We are now in the 49th chapter of Jeremiah, proceeding to wrap up the prophetic book as a whole. And this chapter has much to dive into, so let us not hesitate as we dive further in to the prophecies against the nations. For Jeremiah's time, and of course, as the word of God is timeless, this pertains to all on the earth today. In certain fashions and segments, let's see what the Lord is speaking to us personally as we grow in our faith. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we get to come together, that we are privileged to know you, that we are privileged to be joined together in unity through Jesus Christ, your son, you sent to die for us, who rose again on the third day, conquering sin, death, the grave, and Satan himself. We have victory in Jesus, Father. We are sons and daughters through Jesus, Father. And we just thank you and we praise you for Jesus. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We ask that you would illuminate our minds and our hearts through your word and that you would strengthen us and grow our faith and our love today as we proceed on this journey here on earth. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and honor, O Holy Father God. Amen. All right, chapter 49 in verse 1 states, Concerning the sons of Ammon, thus says the Lord, Does Israel have no sons, or has he no heirs? Why then has Malcolm taken possession of Gad, and his people settled in its cities? Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, that I shall cause a trumpet blast of war to be heard against Rabbah of the sons of Ammon, and it will become a desolate heap, and her towns will be set on fire. Then Israel will take possession of his possessors, says the Lord. Well, O Heshbon, for Ai has been destroyed. Cry out, O daughters of Rabbah, gird yourselves with sackcloth and lament, and rush back and forth inside the walls, for Malcolm will go into exile together with his priests and his princes. How boastful you are about the valleys! Your valley is flowing away, O backsliding daughter, who trusts in her treasures, saying, Who will come against me? Behold, I am going to bring terror upon you, declares the Lord, God of hosts, from all directions around you, and each of you will be driven out headlong, with no one to gather the fugitives together. But afterward I will restore the fortunes of the sons of Ammon, declares the Lord. Verse 7. Concerning Edom, thus says the Lord of hosts, Is there no longer any wisdom in Taman? Has good counsel been lost to the prudent? Has their wisdom decayed? Flee away, turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Dedan. For I will bring the disaster of Esau upon him. At the time I punish him, if grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? If thieves came by night, they would destroy only until they had enough. But I have stripped Esau bare, I have uncovered his hiding places, so that he will not be able to conceal himself. His offspring has been destroyed along with his relatives, and his neighbors, and he is no more. Leave your orphans behind. I will keep them alive, and let your widows trust in me. Verse 12. For thus says the Lord, Behold, those who are not sentenced to drink the cup will certainly drink it, and are you the one who will be completely acquitted? You will not be acquitted, but you will certainly drink it. For I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, that Basra will become an object of horror, a reproach, a ruin, and a curse and all its cities will become perpetual ruins. I have heard a message from the Lord, and an envoy is sent among the nations, saying, Gather yourselves together, and come against her, and rise up for battle. For behold, I have made you small among the nations, despised among men. As for the terror of you, the arrogance of your heart has deceived you. O you who live in the clefts of the rock, who occupy the height of the hill, 
Though you make your nest as high as an eagle's, I will bring you down from there, declares the Lord. And Edom will become an object of horror. Everyone who passes by it will be horrified and will hiss at all its wounds, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah with its neighbors, says the Lord. No one will live there, nor will a son of man reside in it. Behold, one will come up like a lion from the thickets of the Jordan against a perennial watered pasture. For in an instant I shall make him run away from it, and whoever is chosen I shall appoint over it. For who is like me, and who will summon me into court? And who then is the shepherd who can stand against me? Therefore hear the plan of the Lord, which he has planned against Edom, and he and his purposes, which he has purposed against the inhabitants of Taman. Surely they will drag them off, even the little ones of the flock. Surely he will make their pasture desolate because of them. The earth has quaked at the noise of their downfall. There is an outcry. The noise of it has been heard at the Red Sea. Behold, he will mount up and swoop like an eagle and spread out his wings against Basra and the hearts of the mighty men of Edom. And that day will be like the heart of a woman in labor. Concerning Damascus, Hamath and Aprod are put to shame for they have heard bad news They are disheartened. There is anxiety by the sea. It cannot be calmed. Damascus has become helpless. She has turned away to flee, and panic has gripped her. Distress and pangs have taken hold of her. Like a woman in childbirth, how the city of praise has not been deserted. The town of my joy. Therefore, her young men will fall in her streets, and all the men of war will be silenced in that day, declares the Lord of hosts. And I shall set fire to the wall of Damascus, and it will devour the fortified towers of Ben-Hadad. Verse 28. Concerning Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazar, which Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon defeated, thus says the Lord, Arise, go up to Kedar, and devastate the men of the east. They will take away their tents and their flocks. They will carry off for themselves their tent curtains, all their goods and their camels. And they will call out to one another, Terror on every side! Run away! Flee! Dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Hazor! Declares the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has formed a plan against you and devised a scheme against you. Arise, go up against a nation which is at ease, which lives securely, declares the Lord. It has no gates or bars. They dwell alone, and their camels will become plunder and the multitude of their cattle for booty. And I shall scatter to all the winds those who cut the corners of their hair, and I shall bring their disaster from every side, declares the Lord. And Azor will become a haunt of jackals, a desolation forever. No one will live there, nor will a son of man reside in it. Verse 34. That which came as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah, the prophet concerning Elam, at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I am going to break the bow of Elam, the finest of their might, and I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four ends of heaven, and shall scatter them to all these winds. And there will be no no nation to which the outcasts of Elam will not go. So I shall scatter and shatter Elam before their enemies, and before those who seek their lives, and I shall bring calamity upon them. Even my fierce anger declares the Lord. And I shall send out the sword after them until I have consumed them. Then I shall set my throne in Elam, and I shall destroy out of it king and princes, declares the Lord. But it will come about in the last days that I shall restore the fortunes of Elam, declares the Lord. 
Amen. This concludes the 49th chapter of Jeremiah, but yet we find much prophecy concerning these nations, and these nations are a type to us today. Can we relate to any points of the wickedness in which the Lord is judging? Can we relate to any point of the rebellion as to which the Lord is judging? Well, at some point, I'm certain we can, and where we can, whether it be a point of pride, whether it be a point of just blatant ignoring the Lord's voice and rebelling, we can say it's time to repent because there comes a time like in this prophecy where repenting is of a far off option because there comes a time where we begin to reject the voice of the Holy Spirit and our hearts become hardened like that of Pharaoh in Egypt. And at this point of these nations, we see that. But we see a promise for a few of them that there is a remnant of these people to be restored. Their fortunes will be restored. They will be birthed again as the Lord has been gracious, such as Ammon and even Alam and others here. God is faithful. God is just. God knows the heart of each of us, and he is willing to work through us and help us if we be willing, if we are surrendered, if we submit and subject ourselves to the true King of kings, the true Lord of lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's get into some commentaries here. On verse 1, we find that the Ammonites were descendants of Lot, through an incestuous relationship with one of his daughters, as were the Moabites, as we can see in Genesis 19, verses 30 through 38. They were condemned for stealing land from God's people and for worshiping the idol Molech, to whom they made child sacrifices. And we see a lot of that today with the children's sacrifices, that being of abortions. And it gets into seances, into six sacrificial things when you look deeper into the context of what the people are doing behind the scenes. There's a lot of darkness in the land, my friends. And we need to be vigilant and awake and sober in prayer and seeking the Lord's face. And even in fasting as the Lord leads, let us rise up in spirit and truth and fight for those who need our prayers. Amen. In verse 7, because the Israelites descended from Jacob and the Edomites from his twin brother Esau, both nations descended from their father Isaac, there was constant conflict between these nations, and Edom rejoiced at the fall of Jerusalem. See the book of Obadiah. Taman, a town in the northern part of Edom, was known for its wisdom and was the hometown of Eliphaz, one of Job's friends in Job 2.11. But even the wisdom of Taman could not save Edom from God's wrath. And I'm glad it mentioned it here in this commentary because indeed the portions of Edom here in this prophecy from verses 7 all the way on to verses 22, we find this is prophesying against Edom and the whole book of Obadiah, it's a one chapter prophetic book, that is speaking to the almost semblance of everything here written against Edom. There's a lot of semblances there in Obadiah as the same prophecy goes forth from two different prophets, Jeremiah and Obadiah. It's beautiful how we see the Lord come together with his children through multifaceted, where there's two or more witnesses in agreement. We can see the truth of the Lord going forth. And it is that same way with the four gospel accounts and the epistles of the apostles. Hallelujah and amen. In verse 8, we find that Dedan was a flourishing city that supported that supported caravan travel. God told its inhabitants to flee to the caves or they would also be destroyed. Taman and Dedan were at opposite ends of the country, so this shows the completeness of God's destruction of Edom. Basra, 49 verse 13, is a town in northern Edom. And in verse 16, we find that Edom was located in a rock fortress that today is known as Petra in southern Jordan. And Petra was the Greek name given to Simon, which in our translation, our Hebrew, it would have been Cephas. In the Greek, it was Petra, but in our translation, is Peter. That's the apostle Peter. And this is the location of a city known as Petra, this rock fortress in southern Jordan. So Edom thought it was invincible because of its location. Edom was destroyed because of her pride. Pride destroys individuals as well as nations. It makes us think we can take care of ourselves without God's help. 
Even serving God and others can lead us into pride. Yes, it can. Take inventory of your life in service for God. Ask God to point out and remove any pride you may be harboring. And in Jesus' name and breath, Father God, we just pray for deliverance right now for anyone under the sound of my voice and even myself. If there be any pride within us, I ask, when I confess it, I give it to you. I surrender it to you. And I pray that for everyone else here that we would just give it to you, Lord. We release our cares and our concerns and our anxieties. And in this sense, pride can be all of those as well as sin deep sin. We release pride to you and we pray for in its place a deep-rooted humility, Lord, that we'd be humble before you. We can't, you can, and we're calling on you to do only what you can, Father, in spirit and truth, in the name of Jesus. Take the pride and replace it with your humility, the humility of Christ-likeness. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Ooh, that's deep, y'all. Pride is the reason for Lucifer's fall. Pride is the reason for many people's broad road travels to hell. We don't want to walk along the path of pride. Today, let us be humble. Verses 23 through 26. Damascus was the capital, the capital of Aram, north of Israel. This city was defeated by both Assyria and Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar attacked and defeated Damascus in 605 BC. That's referenced in Amos chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. It is difficult to attribute the defeat of the army to a peculiar event, but God utterly destroyed Aram. You see, God gives grace, God blesses, but God also has justice and wrath. We have to know the balance and know the Father's heart. Amen. Verse 28. Qatar, Qadar and Hazor were nomadic tribes east of Israel and south of Aram in the desert. In 599 BC, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed them. Alam, in verse 34, lay east of Babylon and was attacked by Nebuchadnezzar in 597 BC. Later, Alam became the nucleus, the nucleus or the core, the center of the Persian Empire in Daniel 8:2, and the residence of Darius. There's a lot of history here, my friends. In verse 38, we also find now that the throne represents God's judgment and sovereignty. God would preside over Alam's destruction. He is the king over all kings, including Alam's. And that's the Son of God, Jesus, which is, well, is God, fully, so is the Holy Spirit, each fully God, three persons in one embodiment of deity. Mysterious much? Let us grow in the knowledge of the word and we will begin to know the Father more, the Son Jesus more, and the Holy Spirit more. And we will walk in the goodness of God in the land of the living, singing holy, 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 be the most high living God. And my prayer is we'll be doing just that until we meet again around the bend in chapter 50. Lord willing, until then, amen.